Today I'm going to review a watch that not only could be Hamilton's best release of 2022, but also could be the best watch release of 2022. Let's get into it! Yes! Welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Now in 2014, film director Christopher Nolan released the film Interstellar and it's one of my favourite films of all time. Now trying to explain that movie to someone that has never seen it before is a little bit like trying to make someone understand the offside rule in football to someone that's never played football before. It's not easy. Let me just say that the film is full of stuff that I love. It's set in the future. It's science fiction. It's very emotional. Superb acting and time plays a heavy heavy role in the movie. Watch brand Hamilton made two new watches for this movie and one of the watches plays a heavy heavy role in it. The awesome thing is Hamilton released these watches for us to buy. First of all the khaki aviation pilot that actor Matthew McConaughey wears and then in 2019 the one that Matthew gives to his daughter Murphy which is very important in the movie was released in 2019. There was uproar with a lot of watch fans because like the aviation pilot which was 42 millimeters Hamilton released a like-for-like -like copy of the Murph watch which was 42 millimeters now it being less of a pilot's watch and more of a field watch made the 42 millimeter diameter almost unwearable for us little wristers and for about I don't know, three years, us watch enthusiasts have been crying, begging, pleading to Hamilton, can you make the Murph watch a little bit smaller? And guess what? Unlike a lot of watch brands, Hamilton have been listening and they have released another Murph watch at 38 millimeters. And I am very excited because Francis and Gay Jewelers have sent one in for me to review. Now these are selling like absolute hot interstellar cakes and for good reason. Because because this could potentially be not only the best Hamilton release of 2022, but one of the best watches of 2022. Are you interstellar ready? Let's go. And so here it is, the Hamilton Khaki Murph. What a handsome boy. It reminds me of a watch that your great granddad would pass down to you. It has amazing vintage vibes, simple stainless steel case, very well done polishing and brushing on the case and the lugs, beautiful big chunky crown at three o'clock and the dial is just magic. This is the first time I've ever had a Murph in my hands, whether it's a 42 or this 38. And first impressions, this this thing's an absolute winner. Quick spec check. Okay, let's get through these dimensions. 38 millimeter diameter, just over 11 mil thick, 44 lug to lug, and a strapaholic 20 mil lug width. That's gonna come in handy because the strap is as stiff as a stiff man's stiff bits. That's a bit rude. More on that later. We have got a domed sapphire glass protecting the dial. It does have inside AR coating, something the 42 doesn't, but because it's domed, we may have a bit of reflection going on here. No screw down crown, screw down case back, and this gives the watch 100 meters of water resistance, which is spot on and an upgrade for your likes of your khaki king or your khaki filled mechanical, which are 50. The doctor said it was piles, dear. Yes, perfectly normal and natural for a man of my age and stature. Yes, but it's no wonder I've not been able to sit at my bottom for four days. Oh, ha <laughs> And welcome to another edition of the Design House, where we take a look at a watch's case back. And today, a beautiful, beautiful machine by Hamilton. Let's take a look. <laughs> oh my golly gosh. An exhibition case back. Oh, sapphire, don't you know? This is absolutely beautiful. I may actually use this picture as a screenshot on my new Samsung phone. Oh, 80 hours of power reserve. Blow me down with an extra powerful leaf blower. This truly is a remarkable engine to be able to see it like this in all its glory. I'll see you next time for another edition of the Design House. <laughs> Cut. Ooh. Dear, have you got the rubber ring ready for my bottom? Um, could you just click that like button, please? It really helps the channel.
Thank you. Now the strap is well done. We do have a signed buckle that is the same as the logo on the dial. Sometimes Hamilton mixes up their logos a little bit. They use the vintage one and a modern one. It's a leather crocodile style strap and it is very stiff. This is gonna take a lot of breaking in. And me being a bit of a strapaholic, I'd probably have this strap out straight away. Okay, let's look at the face. Dial time. And I love it. Everything printed, minute track along the outside, Love the numerals, big Hamilton logo, all printed on a matte black dial, proper tooly field look. What this dial does have different from a lot of the other khaki field watches is this cathedral style handset. Definitely makes the watch look a lot more vintage. Hamilton have been going around since the 1800s and it definitely makes me think of the American owned Hamilton that first made pocket watches. This handset would have been quite common back then. You've got the likes of the Seiko Alpinist and the Oris pointer date with a similar handset too and I gotta say I really like it. One thing to note that's different from the 42 Murph on the seconds hand there is a little coded message in Morse code. For those of you that don't know it's to do with the film but I can't be bothered to explain it. On this 38 we don't have that coded message and for me I think that is better because it sort of made the 42 more a souvenir of the film. The watch in the film didn't have it so this 38 is more truer to the film watch. All in all, a very simple made dial that looks excellent in my eyes. Right, we've got loom on the handset and loom on the numerals. Let's see how this baby glows. Hamilton are known for their pretty poor loom and to be honest one day they should take a little trip to Seiko's factory snoop around a bit and see if they can work out how their super loom and over is done. <laughs> Operating this watch is very simple and nice. We've got an in-house Hamilton H10 movement, no date, the crown isn't screwed down so you can wind this watch right from the start. Very nice feeling. Pull it out to one position and the seconds hand can be stopped therefore this is hackable. The big boasting draw about this movement is it has 80 hours of power reserve which to be honest I'm not too bothered about. What I like to see more in a watch is a smooth smooth sweep. Is there anyone out there that actually uses 80 hours of power reserve from an automatic watch? 21,600 beats per hour. Tolerances are between plus and minus 15 seconds. This one's running at plus four seconds a day. The other thing that this watch has over the 42 is a Nevacron balance spring, meaning it's pretty anti-magnetic. All in all though, a good solid workhorse of an engine. Hello. On my six and a half inch wrist and the watch looks superb doesn't it? However the strap being so stiff I can't really get that watch to conform to my wrist yet. I know with a soft suede or a leather or even a NATO this watch is gonna hug my wrist amazingly well. I'm very happy with the way this looks on my wrist and to be fair I'm starting to think I may need this one in the collection. <laughs> Give us the positives. Well, like I said, I love the film Interstellar. I actually owned the Khaki Aviation Pilot, but eventually sold it because it was just too big on my wrist. This one is absolutely perfect for most wrists in the world. Definitely feels vintage. I've already said it in the show, but I honestly think this feels and looks like a watch you've been passed down by a family member, you know? Very understated, but really cool. Give us the negatives. Okay, the strap, even though it's nice, is very stiff. Unfortunately, I would not have the patience to break that in. It could take a couple of years. The loom isn't brilliant, but it is a field watch, so you can let it off. And for me, when I'm spending 820 pounds, I really wanna have a watch with a four hertz movement. You can buy a Seiko for around 100 pounds with the same beats per hour. And so probably this watch is about 200 pounds overpriced. But it's new, it's an iconic film watch, and that's the price you gotta pay. The Murph 38 is an iconic, Icon, but a recent one, I would happily have this watch over the recent newly released Tudor Ranger. That was one of the most uninspiring and meh releases of 2022. I would wholeheartedly recommend you buy this Murph over that Ranger and save your pennies. Definitely get Rolex Explorer vibes and it can almost be your one and done watch. Whilst for a bonus, starred in a very cool film about time travel. We love a bit of that, don't we? Here it is, my wife's first impressions of the Hamilton Khaki Murph. <laughs> well, I like the dial. 
What is up with that weird leafy hand? Looks like a churchy leaf. Hate the strap, like the overall look, but the churchy leaf hand is a no-no. If you've watched till the end of this show, well, thanks. Like, subscribe. And if you want a bit more of the Mad Watch Collector, why don't you click the join button? <laughs> and if I've got you for a few more minutes, why don't you watch this show? Oh my gosh. Russell, you've done it again. Supoib. Get on there. It's lovely. It's a great show full of emotions, sci-fi, time, you know. Click it. Come on, click it. Click it. Click it.